Today's webinar is introductory. And since I view EA really as a change in thinking as much as it is anything else, a, a, a paradigm shift, if you, if you would like to call it that, I hope that the next hour or so that we spend together actually stimulates the growth of some new brain cells for you, or what the doctors might call neurogenesis. Let me see. I, I, I noticed some of my slides have been moved around, so uh, let me adjust here. Let me tell you a little bit about, more about the working group. Uh, the working group was formed about two and a half years ago. And, and the mission's fairly straightforward. It's about helping enable EA progress. And we do this by collaborating in various ways. We meet several times a year and have conference calls. In fact, we just had a call on Friday of last week. We study and, 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 and learn things together, actually conduct a study. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that, some of the findings I'll share with you today. And, and, and then, of course, we share things uh, through our website, through publications, through presentations. And we have a book coming out on uh, CRC Press later this year, uh, September, October, it should be out. And uh, uh, it will have, uh, well, I'll tell you a little more about that as we go along. But um, let me just share with you now that we're going to be able to offer a 40% discount to, to any other IT group. Uh, that's how we negotiated the contract. And uh, if you just keep in touch with the SIM website or the working group's website or my own website, uh, later in the year, you'll be able to get more information about that. So let's get started in our quest to better understand enterprise architecture. The focus of today's webinar, EA 101, is really on the question, answering the question, what is enterprise architecture? In May, actually eight weeks from today, I'll do another webinar called EA 201, which will really focus more on the applied aspects of EA. How do you actually do it? So today we're, we're, we're focused on what is enterprise architecture. And really, in order to do that, we need to kind of define what is architecture and, 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 and what is an enterprise. But first, why, why bother? Bottom line is you cannot effectively manage something you don't understand, something you don't know, especially if that thing is big, complicated, or, and or you expect it to change at some point, like an enterprise. Many of today's problems, including the economic one we're all dealing with, are related to this problem of making assumptions about the enterprise instead of actually operating on real knowledge about it. Let me give you a real example here. This is the C-level, the senior management view of an enterprise to its architecture. This is a Fortune 100 uh, major IT services company. As you can see, the, the top row is about strategic business things, strategy and structures. The bottom row is file folders about geeky kinds of things, data, applications, te technologies. The middle is kind of where these things converge into uh, services and initiatives, activities, and, and uh, things like that. The problem that came up was the chief information officer of this enterprise was very unhappy with uh, a, a key vendor, uh, the database management system vendor, and basically was fed up with the way they were treating with him and treating him. And he, and, 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 and he went to his, to his team and he said, we need a new vendor. I, I, I can't put up with this anymore. Let's look and see what's involved in this. OK, well, let's see. We see that we have some serious dependencies here between us and the vendor in terms of data stores, which we would expect, and in terms of applications. And obviously, some of our locations, our data centers, are very dependent on this. But in looking within the individual folders of things, this is something we can manage. After all, we are IT services professionals. We know how to manage projects. We know how to organize them. We can do technology. Let's uh, take this one step further and look at the associations and relationships across these file folders. Oh, and suddenly the CIO understood why the vendor was treating them the way they were. They understood that there was no divorce possibility here. It put too much of the business at risk. 
Sure, technically it was doable, but it would put too many customer accounts, too many key initiatives, too many key strategic objectives at risk, and therefore it was too risky to do. The vendor understood this, but, but the CIO did not. And suddenly he did. This is the power of enterprise architecture, the power of having knowledge about the enterprise, and in this case so that a, a mistake was not made or that months were not spent trying to figure out how to do something that really shouldn't have been done. And instead, within 30 minutes, they had a plan of how to deal with this. They called in their lawyers, because they employed a great many of them, said we need to renegotiate. We need to apply some pressure through legal means to our contractual obligations with this company and force a better relationship. And now they were on a more even playing field. This is the real power of having all the knowledge about the enterprise, or even some substantial part of it, available to you. you know, Socrates said, the unexamined life is not worth living. Well, you know, the short version being know thyself. But if Socrates was a management consultant today, his firm, Socrates Consulting, might have the slogan, organization, you should know yourself. Or perhaps to say it another way, the unexamined enterprise is not worth investing your money in or being employed by. So what is an enterprise? What is an organization? Now, I assume most of you are, are IT people or people with an interest in IT here today. And all of you probably think you know what an enterprise is, and certainly you know a great deal about what an enterprise is. But if that were true, and, and maybe it is true of, of this group here today, a group you know interested in, 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 in this particular topic, perhaps has given it a great deal more thought than on average. But relative to the IT population in general, what's wrong with this picture? Year after year, we are continually focused on this concept of IT business alignment, which is probably even not even the right way to say it. Probably ought to be stated as business IT alignment. But 2008, 2007, 2006, always at the top of the top concerns for senior IT management. 2005, 2004, doesn't seem to matter what, how many years you've been in IT the table five line there, and it doesn't seem to matter what industry you are, the, the last box on, on this slide. What's wrong with that picture is the focus is on a symptom. It, it's, it's an objective. Alignment is a goal. It's not a cause. It's, it's kind of as if, uh, say I want to lose weight, okay? Now I can stand on the scale. And measuring my weight will not cause me to lose weight or to gain weight, depending on what my objective is. I have to change my behaviors and my attitudes. I have to change something else in order to change the measurement of weight. Well, something else probably needs to be an antecedent of a change in alignment. In fact, even if you get alignment one day, the organization is in a constant state of change, both internally and externally, so alignment on one day could be misalignment the next. So to maintain alignment, there's probably things like agility or simplicity that are, that are antecedents of being able to maintain alignment. And, and those three things are only few of many possible design objectives. There's certainly others as, as, as I list them on this slide. So the real issue is, the root issue is how do you manage complexity and change? And that's really why humans invented architecture in the first place. In other words, you've got to know it in order to build it, in order to change it, and really in order to manage it. Darwin got it. The key to survival is adaptability. Fred Brooks got it, too. Fred Brooks, uh, famous for the mythical man month, it, 